Welcome to This Week in the PNFL. I'm your host, Mark Hill, and along for the ride is Mitch Grawl and Dean Chambers. How you doing tonight, fellas? Very good. How are you? Doing yeah, great. all right. Doing all right. All right, guys. And we have the co-commish of the PNFL with us, Rich Colasino. How you doing, Co- oh, Rich? How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good, Mark. See, there's, I like there's the way another that one. sounds. Yeah, I like that co com- that co commish sounds nice. That's there you no longer go. Existent. There He's you co-commish. go. I like it. Yeah. So <laughs> I you- guess you'd be like, what? I guess you're the Kamala Harris of the league. Is that kind of right? Rick? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I don't want to admit this, but my breasts are probably just as big at this point. So yeah, I think it's uh, it's accurate. <laughs> okay, so we got to see. We got to send you bras for Christmas. Okay. <laughs> Some uh, might think that's almost as bad as calling Charlie Joe Biden. Oh, <laughs> oh! I don't know who would do that. I'm not, I'm not touching that one. I'm not touching that one. So, uh, so you enjoying? You still on the on your still on the East Coast, or you uh, went back to the West Coast? I am in Florida right now. Okay, still East Coast hanging. So, no, 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 let's be clear about that. It isn't me that calls him that. I just want to be clear about that. Uh-huh. <laughs> I heard that. In, in our pre-game, pre-show discussion, someone said that. I won't say who said it, but <laughs> I, I'm not touching it. I'm I leaving it was, alone. I think it was Mitch. I think it was Mitch. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I think it was Mark. Actually, <laughs> no, not me. Mark, Mark. Yeah, Mark. Mark said, you know, being a small business owner is tough under Jer- uh, Charlie. So, like, <laughs> uh, uh, no, no. You got. Hey, you guys know who it is. You know who the. Uh, the jester is out of this group. And uh, I have known Charlie for 25 years. I would never make a comment <laughs> like that about him. <laughs> Me neither. Oh, never right. Make that the ball. Yeah, we know, we know who likes to stir the pot here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so we have wrapped up the week 13 games. Um, there was some, uh, some pretty good games there uh, that we just went through. Um, a couple upsets. Uh, we're going to go through all of those. And we have Rich with here, with us today because he's going to touch a little bit more on Mitch's comment um, last week regarding the trades. Um, you know, uh, you have to have, once you pick a player up, you have to have him on your roster for a certain amount of time before you can trade him. Um, we may open it up to a couple other little things as well. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and go into our week 14 games and uh, where we sit with the lead pipe locks and our overall predictions. So if you guys are ready, we are going to get this thing kicked off right now with the first game uh, from week 13. We have Indianapolis hosting New England and Indy took this game 28 to 13. This week, we're going to start this off with Dean. You know, before I start, um, is this player of the week this week? Is that an error by any chance? It's kind of spark with that. But anyway. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> Go ahead. I expected the Patriots to win and cover. And again, this is a case where you took a team to win and then they kind of let you down. So um, I kind of thought that Indianapolis wasn't as doing, as well, uh, doing as well, but they definitely – Showed up in this game and, uh, you know, scored more than double what New England did. Had a solid performance, 364 yards of offense and uh, some pretty good passing and some very good running overall and played good defense against, pretty solid defense against the Patriots. So, you know, it, it, again, it raises the question, what, you know, what are the Patriots aren't uh, looking to do well? They start off 4-0, and playing some apparently not as strong teams and, they're now losing another key game they could have won and need to win if they want to make postseason. Mitch. Well, we all know, you know, uh, you know, Mox is, uh, you know, fantasies about tight ends and how he has like three uh, or actually four tight ends on the roster. I think three are first round draft picks or something like that. And I'm looking at the stats here. And of those, you know, high end draft pick tight ends, they uh, combine for one reception per six yards. Uh, and so, you know, when uh, you put all that capital into a position that's going to generate one catch for six yards, 
you know, it's, it's tough to win a ball game. And so um, not exactly surprised that Indianapolis won, but, um, I, you know, I thought it would be a little closer. The score, uh, you know, the score definitely, the two touchdowns is a little bit uh, on the high end. But, um, you know, we'll see uh, how uh, how things go. Uh, New England's still in the middle of it, so we'll see if they can bounce back. All right. Rich, you ran the game. Well, what would you think? My memory of the game was that New England actually played fairly well. They threw a couple of picks, though, that really hurt them, I believe. Um, they had 400 yards of offense. They just – they the, those couple of picks, I think, really ended – it ended their season. I think that loss ends New England's season. Mm. Moving on over to our next game, we have New Orleans hosting Jacksonville down in the bayou. And New Orleans took this one 34 to 17. Mitch. I mean, almost 500 yards uh, total offense for New Orleans. Thor was definitely swinging the hammer all over the field against uh, Jacksonville. Uh, three touchdowns. Um, you know, uh, don't look forward to uh, playing uh, New Orleans this week. Uh, but what's even better for them is the fact that they were able to get 234 yards on the ground, and that's with Thor slinging the uh, slinging the hammer like he did. So, uh, very impressive win for New Orleans. All right, Dean. Yeah, this is was a battle between two teams that have been kind of hard to predict. You know, I think we often like to pick Jacksonville to lose, and then when we do, they win. But, you know, the one key issue, you know, mirroring what, what Rich said about the first game, in this game, Captain Kirk throws three interceptions, and that probably killed their chances of competing in this game as well. And uh, I don't know if Jacksonville season was already over at this point. It probably is. I mean, Jacksonville apparently at this point is looking more like they're competing for a berth in the Sacco Bowl. Oh, don't want that. Uh, actually, Dean, uh, reports uh, are that Jacksonville season ended about six weeks ago. But that's, that's, that's... <laughs> Rich, what do you got? <laughs> yeah, these guys, they, these guys hit it. Uh, this was good New Orleans. New Orleans is bad some weeks. They're good other weeks. This was the good New Orleans week. 500 yards of offense. They ran the ball. The game was close, I think, for halfway. I think it, it was the game 17-17 at one point. I'm pretty sure the game was fairly close, and then New Orleans just opened it up. And as Dean said, he uh, Kirk threw three interceptions, so that was the end of that. That was pretty much ball game. Next game we have Detroit hosting Kansas City, and um, this was Oof. the one that uh, we we showed, and um, I was supposed it was billed as a pick'em game. Um, it was anything. <clears throat> I mean. KC really put it on them, and then at the end, there were some junk points that was thrown on there at the end, but we're going to go through that. We're going to start with Dean. Yeah, this is another game that didn't go the way I thought it would. My lead pipe lock in that it being a lead pipe curse. But, yeah, you see those numbers. The, the uh, player of the week and player of the game for Baker Mayfield was not an error. 23 of 36 at a 65-yard pass i'm assuming that went for a touchdown um 352 yards of passing pretty solid rudolph came in and threw four passes and completed all of them but it was pretty solid effort especially early in the game you may remember from watching that game detroit fell behind by what was it six 15 16 whatever it was yeah. Two or three scores. It was, uh, it was like, like it was pretty... 21, something like early on by halftime, something along those lines. It was 28-7 yeah. at the half for those who can't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll get to you in a minute, Coach. <laughs> Go ahead, Dean. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it was a pretty solid win. And, uh, you know, Detroit has been doing much better and will probably make postseason. But uh, this was not a good game for them. But. They came back in the second half and made it at least somewhat interesting to only lose by 11 points. Mm. We're going to jump to Rich real quick, and then we're going to have the interview with the coach. So what did you see in this, Rich? I saw a nightmare second quarter for Detroit. I think Kansas City scored 28 points in the second quarter, thanks to a couple of fumbles, right? Mm -hmm. And 
if I, I'm going to take the Detroit side of this and I, I shut him out the other three quarters and take away that second. And he's in the game, if not for that. So, I mean, you can't say that. Obviously, Kansas, Kansas City's offense did move the ball, his, but he couldn't run. 22 yards, I think, for the game or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, good win for, for, for Mitch, but I would not be thrilled with that effort, actually. Yeah. Mitch, let's talk about well, your boys. I'm looking at the, well, I'm looking at this and, you know, how in the world I missed two field goals uh, in the dome. Or actually, I guess it was outside, but there was no weather. Uh, missing two field goals, again, over 40 yards. Continues to be uh, an issue for uh, for my kicker. I think he's uh, 7 of 11 this year. But I'll tell you what, though, man, old uh, – Old Mayfield, he baked them uh, for sure, like a baked potato um, in this game, uh, rushing and passing for touchdowns. You know, uh, Dean already hit it. I mean, Mason Rudolph looking like an all-pro coming off the bench when Mayfield had to take a breath, throwing a touchdown pass. They got 200-yard receivers. Uh, Olave, who uh, many of you all passed over in the draft, so thank you all very much. Uh, and uh, Emmanuel Hall, one of my um, – long-standing wide receivers so I uh, felt pretty good yeah I agree the uh, little surprise I couldn't get the ball uh, on the ground moving but uh, who cares when uh, you throw it all over the yard like that so uh, I'm sure uh, we'll get the get that ironed out here uh, over the next few weeks so yeah all right next up we have Seattle hosting Pittsburgh in the Pacific Northwest um, probably one of our upsets. I don't know how you guys are considered it's the seven and a half. Uh, as Seattle took this game thirteen to ten, Mitch. Sloppy, sloppy game. Wow. Um, really disappointed in the Steelers being the fact that they really needed to get this win uh, to keep their playoff hopes alive. Um, they're still in it, but this definitely puts a damper. Neither team could do anything um, on, on offense. Uh, both quarterbacks threw two picks, um, couldn't complete over 50% of their passes. Defense was the name of the game uh, in, in this uh, in this game for sure. So, um, you know, if uh, you know if, if, if Pittsburgh could actually uh, make field goals, uh, I can relate to that. They uh, they would have won this game. So, um, but hey. You know, we'll see. You know, Seattle is uh, on a three-game win streak, so yeah, I guess it's the, the luck of the bird up there in the Northwest. Dean. Well, it's it's fitting that the player of the game is a safety for Seattle, and uh, I I I did pick this pick this as an upset last week that the Seahawks would win, and they did. It was a defensive struggle, and um, I'm sure uh, Mark would like to see his offense perform a bit better and sure the Pittsburgh coach obviously thinks his, his offense needs to be a lot better because it was a low scoring. Game. But uh, Seattle, you know, once again is uh, good at playing the spoiler late in the season. Mm-hmm. Rich. Um, this game was rough to watch, as I recall. Um, the four interceptions, three missed field goals. Yeah, you ever watch a game where you think this is great defense or bad offense or vice versa? This just felt like bad offense. That's what I that's what I saw. And it was I was really difficult to watch this game. So let's move on to the next game. <laughs> <laughs> next game we have LA hosting. Well, 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 what were your thoughts on the game, uh uh there, Mark? Um coach. <laughs> it was ugly. Uh, let me interview the coach. Mark, tell me how, what were your thoughts on uh, this game here uh, at home against the Steelers? But if you can win ugly and lose ugly, you'd rather was, win ugly. It was an ugly game. Um, I'm still not happy with the kicking. Um, offense wasn't really doing much compared to the previous two weeks. Uh, what I will say is that even though it was an ugly win, it was a win to quote Mitch. So, you know, that's pretty much all there is to say. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and believe it or not, mathematically, Seattle is uh, in the hunt right now, I guess, to put it in the playoff terms. 
Yeah, I'm 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 looking <laughs> I, yeah, with a telescope. <laughs> you know, between here what and the moon. Are we doing here? Is, is this new mass that you're going by? Uh, oh I, no. Oh no. No. I mean, take hey, look at the standings. Just look at the standings. Yeah, you know, that's, that, that, that you know that that tough NFC look, look, you know, look. marks right in the middle of it. Uh, playoffs, playoffs, playoffs. <laughs> I just want to win a game. <laughs> I just want to win my game next week. That's all I want to do. <laughs> I'm not worried you about three playoffs. in a row, man. I mean, you're like the hottest team in the league. I'm not worried about playoffs right now. I just want to win. <laughs> that, that's all I can do. So. <clears throat> Moving on, uh, next game we have is Los Angeles hosting Las Vegas. Um, I I hope Steve is still trying to plug away and um, keep his team in the fight because he's still in the playoff race, but we'll talk to you guys about that. So we're going to start this one off with Dean. Yeah, this is an upset, and I, I... – this was one of the few games I got right last week and predicted this as an upset. Um, I didn't think that Steve was really tanking. I think he was just frustrated when he said that. But I think there are some things that are going on why he's losing some of these games that he should be winning. And I did think that uh, um, the Raiders would be competitive here. The Raiders have come close, lost some very, very close games. I mean, few of those games had the Raiders won, they would be in, you know, in in this and a chance to go to postseason as well. And uh, so it doesn't surprise me, really. I Again, I predicted that the, the Raiders would pull out this upset. I think next year the Raiders are going to be a much stronger team. As their younger talent and the coaches, their coaches getting better at putting together game plans and profiles. All right. Mitch. Well, I look at this, and um, you know, I know that uh, yeah, Las, Las Vegas, you know, did have some uh, big special teams plays to give them short fields. That's why I think some of the some of the you know offensive stats look a little funky, even though they scored 27 points. But I think the story here uh, is um, Los Angeles. You know, uh, Steve told us he was done. You know, he was he was throwing in the towel, and he was going to focus on rules and uh, the, you know, custom plays. And we saw a lot about custom plays this past week and <laughs> his team's performance was not so hot. So uh, I think uh, we need to believe what he's saying. So, All right. Rich. Yeah, I think uh, maybe Steve has folded his tent. Um, but Vegas, uh, pretty impressive at 36 minutes they had the ball for and 200 yards of rushing. Um, they just kept moving the chains, um, and Steve just did not do anything to stop his running game. So, I don't know, maybe Steve has is calling it quits for the season. It's a mistake because you get into the playoffs, and as we saw, anything can happen. I mean, he can beat the Jets. I mean, he can win a Super Bowl, right? So, I don't know why you wouldn't try to get into the playoffs even at 7-9 and nine and, and roll the dice. I think it's a mistake to, to fold up, but... He was pretty upset the other day, so, and it all started with that trade. Ever since then, he's been in a kind of a foul mood. Mm. So, we'll see. Well, I hope I hope that he decides to uh, keep swinging and keep fighting. You know, uh, you know when you play when you're playing in this league. What I've noticed is pretty much there's there's a lot of good coaches out there and. You got to step up your game, and when you fold up like that, it just kind of diminishes it a little bit. And you know, if you get that win, and you're thinking, "Okay, I beat a good team," you need to know that I act. You know, they actually put their best foot forward, or they did something um, to um, put on a good fight. And phoning it in just just seems like a, a tainted victory. So, hopefully, well, maybe we need to give Neil a little credit. Maybe Neil actually played, coached a good game. There you go. So. Yeah, he did, and I think what Steve, part of Steve, what Steve was probably frustrated with, um, that trade that he made with me. I think he made that with the intent of strengthening his team, strengthening his team for the rest of the season. And I think, uh, given, but then he lost to Jacksonville and was pretty upset by that. But and then traded you know, off he, all of his uh, veterans. So, yeah. <laughs> so. <clears throat> Oh well. oh, well. 
next game we have Minnesota hosting Washington, and they ended up taking this game twenty to ten. Mitch. Well, all I know is is that Minnesota is uh, rolling like I keep telling y'all they're going to be. Lonnie Johnson was an absolute beast in that uh, purple uh, defensive backfield and uh, just would not let Washington really get anything going through the air. You know, the the purple people leaders up front kept that running game intact. So, uh, you know, y'all keep thinking I'm nuts, but, you know, Minnesota, you know, they're they're going to keep rolling. All right. Dean. What do you have a rowdy party going on in the background there or something? Uh, it sounds like he has WWE. That would be my dogs having a wrestling match. That's over what I here. thought. Right. I thought it was a WWE yeah. going on over there. Yeah, right now, right now, Daisy's got Murray uh, pinned upside the uh, dog bed over here. So, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, dude. I would say over this season, Minnesota has been kind of tough to predict at times, and we, you know, can predict that they keep winning and then they lose the game we thought they would win, and then. In this case, get an upset over Washington, and but it was a solid win, you know, much more offense and time possession was about even. But um, I know Jerry talks about trying to hold the other team, you know, under twenty points via his defense, and he's very good at doing that. Even this game, Minnesota scored twenty, but his offense didn't really show up the way it normally does. Ten points, that's generally not going to win a game in this league. Rich. Yeah, I think that's the story for Jerry. Jerry, is, you know, uh, is kind of going, he's, his offense is not doing much the last few weeks. And Barney is playing, is coaching better lately. So this was a tough one. And Jerry's really going to have to figure this out because he's heading into the playoffs on a down note where he's already lost the one seed. So now he's going to have to go into Chicago if he wants to get to a Super Bowl. So um, Barney's peaking at the right time, and Jerry is not. Okay. Next game, speaking of Chicago, they took on Atlanta. And uh, a little rough outing there for Dean as Chicago took this one 39-21. Mitch. Well, you know, the um, Chicago won by 18 points, but hey, Hendon Hooker had 69% completion percentage in his debut. So, right, so we're going to let's celebrate that for uh, for Atlanta because there wasn't a whole lot else to celebrate um, for uh, for the Falcons. Chicago, uh, yeah, pretty much uh, handled handled their business in you know all all aspects uh, of the game here. So not a whole lot uh, really to, to look at other than, um, you know, maybe they could have uh, run the ball a little bit more. They did average almost six yards a carry. Um, so, you know, but I'm sure they'll take an 18-point win uh, any time. All right. Rich, what do you got? I actually thought that Dean played better than Mitch has given him credit for. This game was actually very close until late, and Dean – fumbled three times and lost three fumbles and Justin I, I don't know how many points he scored off those three fumbles but it's it, I think it changed the game um, yardage wise these guys were close time of possession was close uh, the game was close until the till mid third quarter and then a couple of mistakes and then Justin basically pounced on it and then blew the game open mm-hmm. so I wouldn't be too unhappy if I was if I was Dean okay Dean Tell me about your team, Coach. Saying it's true. The game was going back and forth, and teams are trading scores for the first three quarters. It was fairly close. Um, a lot of what I tried to do on the offense, and I, I did try to put together, you know, knowing that it's changing quarterbacks. And, you know, Ben DiNucci just hasn't really been doing it lately. So that even that's kind of premature, it's time to start handing over a quarterback. And I put together an offense that I thought would do well against Chicago's defense and do well for him. And, you know, as Mitch said, he got the 69% completions. But my defense just, yeah, the, the turnovers were huge, obviously, the three homos, but my defense just collapsed in the fourth quarter. I mean, the, you know, the guys that are playing defense right now, they just can't, they just can't do it. This is the same defense that largely that 
gave up 49 points to the to the Redskins in the game that we watched. Um, you know, that my defense is a rebuilding project in the coming off season and beyond. And they collapsed in the fourth quarter. And that, you know, this this game looked winnable up there at that point. And you know, my defense did get some defensive stops earlier in the game in the first half, and the offense put together some drives. And you know, it looked like it was possible. It's not easy to beat Chicago. I mean. Most of the times I've played Chicago, I've lost. I've done it a couple of times, but most times I lose. And most of us lose most of the time we play Chicago. So can't have your defense collapse in the fourth quarter like that in a tough game. It doesn't work so well. Yeah. Mm. Next game we have, as we're coming to the end of our week's game, we have New York Jets hosting San Francisco and San Francisco fell a little bit short by a score of 25 to 17. Dean. Yeah, this was, as you like to say, the Jets doing what the Jets do. 49ers have been pretty solid this season, but the Jets did better. They um, converted thirds downs better. They had more, you know, they had 27 first downs to San Francisco's 12. They passed pretty well and uh, adequately, at least, and had some very solid running and good balanced offense. So, you know, another good win for the Jets. They keep marching forward with with wins to uh, get into the postseason with some momentum. Okay. Mitch. I mean, I think this actually might be Charlie's best coaching effort of the year. <laughs> I mean, when you look at the stats in this game, you know, San Francisco averaged 3.5 yards per play on offense, averaged 1.9 rushing, 4.3 passing, got outgained by over 230 points or so here. And yet, this was only a one-score game. That takes coaching right there to be able to keep that game with uh, close uh, to the end. And so, uh, that's off to uh, to Charlie and uh, and what he was able to do to keep this game uh, in contention. So, that's that's all I got, uh, Mark. All right. Rich. Yeah, this this was a weird game where it was. Uh, I don't know how this game is only an eight-point game, huh? It was 17 nothing at halftime because I, I didn't watch it all. I kind of came back, and it looked like a blowout was happening. And then, I don't know, San Francisco just kind of crept back into it. They scored late. They even got an onside kick. And they had four plays to move the ball down. And then, the, you know, the Jet defense stepped up and stopped them. But this came, came down to the Jets needing a stop which is amazing. So Mitch is right. I don't know how this yeah. game was a one score game. So well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, the best coaching effort of the season right here. Mm. Yeah. Those gritty 49ers, they just they they don't quit, right? They, I know, man. All right. Last game for week 13, we have the New York Giants taking on Anaheim and uh, Shug came back and, you know, it was a low scoring game, but Anaheim ended up taking this game 14 to 13. Mitch. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> you know, it's a crazy game when the, uh, the team who lost gets player of the game and it's a safety for crying out loud. We you know we see it a lot with quarterbacks with a safety. Ooh, uh, I I don't know. Uh, I think Rich said it earlier. I don't know if this was good defense or bad offense, but uh, uh, whatever it was, it was not. It was not pretty. But um, you know, uh, I sure Anaheim will, will take it, and now you know it puts them in a tie uh, with Seattle for uh, last place in the NFC West. So if Seattle can keep pushing. You know, not only can you make the playoffs, but you can you're assured that you're not in last place. So with Anaheim, hey, I'll take that, Dean. Yeah, it was bad on us. Um, but you know, I told you too last week. It was closer than expected that that uh, Anaheim was going to win this game, and and uh, you know, those who want to 
underestimate Shuggy as a coach will do so at their own peril. Um, but the big thing is the Rams defense kept, other than one time, kept the Giants offense out of the end zone. You know, the Giants did a one touchdown in this game, but there were four drives where if I were the Giants coach, you know, I want my team to score touchdowns on those. They had to settle for field goal attempts, and then they missed two of them. Two missed field goals out of four. This is the game right there. Anaheim, their def- their offense was a bit inconsistent. Their defense was solid, but they did come through with two key drives, including in the second half, that nine-minute drive to open the third quarter that they scored their second touchdown on. Pretty much took the Giants out of the game, and, and that kind of drive usually will – in the second quarter like that. So very close, tough win, but a, but a good win for uh, for the Rams, much needed win. And, uh, you know, the Giants might be uh, in contention for that dreaded honor that we've talked about on the, on the show here. Oh, boy. Mitch. <laughs> well, yeah. I've we'll already do, we'll uh, said deep. my piece, but I'm I can talk Mitch. again if you'd like. <laughs> You know, as I look uh, at even deeper into the stats, uh, you know, it, it, it very often, uh, very rarely do you see a team win a game uh, not only uh, barely getting 200 yards of total offense, but only generating 65 yards of passing. I mean, you know, I, 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 yeah. I can't quite remember, but uh, I think they were running the uh, old Nebraska, you know, wish no, the old Oklahoma wishbone. I'm sorry. No, or you can, or you can talk about game, the, so. or you can talk about during the Army Navy game, and um, yeah. I'm an Army guy, that is but true. Army does not throw at all. Yeah, <laughs> if, I think you know, they, they could be in a shotgun the and they're going to run. So yeah, I didn't yeah. even know you could. I didn't even know this game allowed that kind of logic, but uh, <laughs> apparently it did. I didn't even realize it. So. All right, Rich. Yeah, this was a rough game to watch again. This is – I'm going to try to market this one as a sleep aid and see if we can make some money off this one because <laughs> this was bad. Um, eight completions. I mean, Dean, I know, I know you love to talk up Shuggy and stuff, but he's going to have to complete more than he passes if he's going to beat Chicago or some better team. Um, this was just bad football. And, and the Giants, I think, are headed to the number one pick in the draft. Ouch. And you know what? You know what? Honor that gets them also. What's that? The uh, the the birth and the sacco bowl that we've been talking about. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Yeah, we need to get we need to have a special game that um, Rich can put together for the sacco bowl. And, this, and for those that don't know, if you ever watch, it used to be on FX called the League, based off a of fantasy football league, and the two worst teams they played for the sacco bowl. And if you want to know what the Sacco Bowl or the trophy looks like, Google it. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. Just, yeah, Google it. And you'll be off. Awesome. Yeah. Well, this know. week's game with the Giants and Jack is really going to, you know, if the Giants lose that game, it's this is done. It's pretty much it. Yeah, we thought that uh, the, the Atlanta-Seattle game a couple weeks was going to be that. But now it looks like it might be the Giants versus Jacksonville. Yeah, that looks like it is the Sacco Bowl. Mm-hmm. No worries. I'm good. I'm good with that. <laughs> All right. We're going to pivot on over to our middle segment. And um, what this topic is, uh, last week, Mitch had um, an interview with Rich off Offset, and uh, it was regarding the trades and how you cannot um, – you know, sign a player and then trade him away right away. You need to have him on your roster for a certain amount of time. Um, during our pre-show, uh, it was mentioned that um, that Mitch was a little um, overly diplomatic in his presentation. <laughs> so uh, we are bringing okay, in. Okay, I didn't use all the uh, curse words that <laughs> yeah. really put into <laughs> his uh, stuff. I told you all. I started off telling him what he said, but then I backed off. So. Yeah, so uh, uh, so because he was a little bit uh, diplomatic, um, the co-commish is bringing in his hammer so he can uh, drop his hammer down and uh, get into it a little bit uh, 
more in depth and a little bit more forceful as to the uh, reasoning and the logic behind this. So um, I'm going to hand the floor over to Rich and let you go ahead and take off. All right. Thank you, Mark. And Mitch, you did hit all the points. So it wasn't that you were soft. You just weren't punching back against Dean's comments. Because Dean, Dean, you mentioned that the reason that we're doing it for the uh, to be the N- like NFL like, you kind of disregard that like that doesn't matter. And actually, that is the biggest reason why Charlie and I put that rule in, was because this, trading players who you just signed is nothing like the NFL. You can't show me, you can't point to me one NF tra- NFL trade that that has ever happened. So that is the main reason why this rule is in. And as Mitch pointed out, the second reason was it was becoming rather grotesque the way teams, and I'm going to even point them out too, because I'm pretty sure it was James, who basically signed three players one week. And before those trades were were even finished, he had already had a trade in place to ship them off to another team. Now that is ridiculous. That this is not the NBA, the NFL would that would never happen in the NFL ever. And soon as that that type of, you know, maneuvering started to happen, other teams were beginning to complain about that. And Charlie didn't like it. I didn't like it. And we had to put a stop to it. Mm-hmm. So and so those two reasons. That's why. But the NFL like mantra that we actually go by, we take that pretty seriously as best we can. And you kind of poo pooed it like it doesn't matter, like who cares? But it really does matter. And I think that's why this league has lasted 25 years is because we do take that seriously. Because we don't want to turn this into a, a wild west of, you know, an online football league. Or like I was telling Mitch, you ever play one of those text-based, you know, uh, games, football, baseball, hockey, whatever. And when in the infancy of those games, you used to be able to trade for a player or sign a player and then turn around and, tra- and trade them for like a first round draft pick because the game developers didn't kind of close that loophole. But that, and that's exactly what this is. An NFL team would never sign three players on Monday and trade them to another team on Tuesday. So that's the main, that's why, and really this rule is not going to change because Charlie doesn't want it changed. And I guarantee you half the league or more would not want this rule changed. So there you go. All right. Any, um, any feedback from you two? Let's start with Dean. <laughs> yeah, let, me, let me just add a little context to why this ended up the way that um, Steve and I had made that trade. We both thought it was a good trade. Um, and uh, the situation that happened, and it was my fault for not keeping better track of my points. Um, he had put a zero bid in for that linebacker, and I tried to bid one point because I thought I got a point left. So Steve I was interested in that play, and, and to try to make the trade balance off and you know make it worthwhile for me to do it, he offered that linebacker as part of the trade. So we agreed on the trade. We both thought it was a pretty good trade for both our teams. He was acquiring a couple of veteran players that would help him in his run to get into the playoffs. Now, I know Rich had pointed out to both of us the trade wasn't going to go through because that linebacker who he had just signed a couple of weeks ago was in the deal. And I'm sure we both reacted to it. I know that for me, I was just frustrated with the fact that I wasn't even angry at Steve necessarily, but I was just frustrated with the fact that, that it was a good trade and it was suddenly scuttled by this rule so i in our emails i railed against the rule and i remember it was kind of interesting i don't know what kind of i don't know what kind of response rich was getting from steve i'm sure steve was very frustrated and apparently pretty livid at the situation because <laughs> yes rich he responded in the email and and said that something about that um that something about that i had the more reasonable response of the two of us and i thought was that a joke because i totally railed against the rule in the email. Let, let me, Dean, let me clarify, you know, the, that okay. trade. You, you, you're you right. There was nothing wrong with that. I mean, I know Steve did not try to make that trade to circumvent the rules. I know yeah. that. I know the trade in and of itself is fine. 
Um, and, he, and I think the player had signed maybe even three to four weeks earlier. So I know he didn't do that just to trade him down the road. But that's not the point. I mean, the rule is the rule. I mean, I don't want to have to, and Charlie definitely doesn't want to have to, look at every trade and try to get inside your head. I mean, maybe some coaches might play this game and sign a guy and two weeks later trade him. So we just have an arbitrary eight-week rule. Um, maybe it should be four weeks. Uh, we, you can debate how long the, the period should be. So I told Steve that, Steve, I know you didn't make this trade to kind of get around this rule, but it is a rule. And, and I'm not going to change it just for your trade. So if you guys want to debate, debate it in the offseason, that's fine. And, uh, Dean, you made, made another point about the, about the points. Well, this is another problem. With, that's why this rule is also – teams are basically using the zero-point signing. We, we put that in as a safety net for teams essentially mismanaging their rosters. That's the only reason zero point signing is there. It's not to be nice or it's not to reflect the NFL or something. It is a safety net for teams who have consistently over time mismanaged their points. That's why it's there because we had many situations where teams were at a point and he had 40, someone would have 48 players, something silly like that. And so we had to put a rule in to help those coaches. So, and everyone, everyone loves that rule. Nobody wants to get rid of it. Everyone loves the safety net. This rule, this eight-week rule, is also a safety net for newer coaches and weaker GMs who basically don't know the players of the league. Because what's going to stop Justin, who's got 75 points, from signing three players on Monday and then turning around to the newer coach, who, by the way, has no – no scouting reports. He has no Excel sheets. He's, he's doing nothing, on, you know, for roster, you know, to check to see what the talent of the league is. And Justin turns around and says, I'll give you these three players for a fourth round pick. What's going to stop that? Other than this rule, this rule stops that at least prevents it for eight weeks. It gives the newer coach, the weaker GM, a chance to learn the talent in the league. So you like the one safety net, but you don't like this safety. This safety net is not there for you. It's there for a new coach, a weaker GM. That's who it's there for. And we're not going to take that away because I guarantee you if it's gone, there are coaches who will, who will basically exploit this and be signing free agents and then turning around trying to trade them. And we can't have that. Well, yeah, we have referred to some of these people as being close shots. But, you know, I was just frustrated just simply because it stopped the trade I was doing with Steve. And those that email exchange took place about a half an hour before we went live to do the show that week. So that's why it ended up where, you know, I ended up raising I Steve. I think Steve felt like I was knocking it down and then maybe thinking he was trying to exploit the rule. And I don't think that Steve is a straight up guy. Steve is not, he's not that type of guy or coach. I know he didn't do it for that reason. So, but, but he was, he just was in a bad mood and he was getting mad at me because I pointed out that this is the rule. And so it's, you know, he was kind of ticked that week and I understand, but I wasn't going to change the rule just for that trade. And by, and I gave you guys the workaround, change the player, swap out that player and trade that player later for the guy you swapped it, swapped in, right? You can do that in, in the offseason. It's not a big deal. There is a workaround. And, you know, if you guys want to talk about changing it from eight weeks to six weeks to four weeks or something, we can discuss that. But the rule is not going away. Mitch, what's your take on this? Uh, my take is uh... – Avoid uh, trading marginal players for marginal players, and you have to worry about it. That's all I got. <laughs> okay. Well, they could be good players, though. They could be a big free agent in there, right? Yeah, it's possible, but there's there's not a whole lot of differentiation between well, those free agents. Well, how about a scenario? How about a scenario where every now and then we get a free agent who uh, generates a 14 points or something like that? Maybe James, you know, goes crazy bidding up a guy. Every, every now and then you get a player who gets an inordinate amount of attention in free agency, and he signs for 10 points, 11 points, 12 points. Well, what's to stop, you know, any of these coaches from 
from that type of, and then t- trying to turn around and trade that player for a first round pick. That would never happen. A player would never sign with the Chargers today and then, and then allow, like the players union would be screaming. I mean, it just, it, it doesn't happen in any sport except for basketball. And basketball does these sign and trades because it's, it's cap thing because they can get more money from their original team than they can the, the team that they just traded to, right? I, I don't know all the NBA cap rules, but I think it's a cap manipulation, which is why they allow those sign and trades. Baseball doesn't do it. Football doesn't do it. Um, you know, other te- other sports don't do this. And we don't even have a cap. So it, there's no reason well, to allow and that's this. where, and honestly, and I know you and I talked a little bit about this offline, and this isn't, this, this isn't necessarily the topic, but it, it kind of relates to it is that, you know, we think about being NFL-like, and this is one of the things we're doing, and I agree with it, so um, I was just being snarky with the marginal player thing. But um, I agree with what we're doing because, yeah, you wouldn't see that. And I know this would make uh, this probably, again, half the league would probably be up in arms about it, but I think this is another reason to go and back and have some sort of salary cap in place and heck maybe at some point now i'm getting now i'm about to get really radical here maybe at some point we just do away with the points and just let us use dollars i know dean you know you talked about that a little bit too just use yeah, dollars it was, and make it, was, it make this truly more nfl like because you're right rich i mean it's you know the biggest thing in the nfl over the over at major league baseball is the fact that they do have a salary cap and you know right yeah. now we don't so. I raised that issue on the forum in which I suggested that we should either do points of the salary cap, but not a combination of both. They don't really mix very well, and I tried to explain that in that forum post a few weeks ago. And I believe four to six weeks ago, I posted on the forum because I was bored about what do people think about bringing the salary cap back. And it's a mixed bag. I think half the league would be okay. The other, the the, the newer coaches. I don't think want it because they think this league is already too complicated. Um, I know Justin would love to bring back the Sal cap con manager program, which is a, I guess it's a possibility if, if people have it on their, you know, if we have it still, and if it still works. Um, I don't know that you can get 16, 17 coaches to say yes to this though, at this point. Well, uh, wouldn't you yeah, want to go with, I well, think half the league wouldn't be on board. Now, what are the rules if you were to bring this in? Would you want to have, does it have to be a unanimous? Does it have to be three quarters of, of the coaches agree? If three quarters of the coaches agree to it, then it, come, then it comes <laughs> well, that's, in? Well, that's where I start emailing coaches who are going to whip up the votes, right? And, and find out who's going who's gonna to quit. I don't want to see coaches quit over something like this. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've had these moments before where, so what was the last major rule? Maybe the salary, getting rid of the salary cap may have been it, but where there's a lot of email exchange behind the scenes trying to make sure, okay, listen, you hate this, but are you going to quit over this? I, I don't want to see anyone leave over silly stuff like this. Right. So it's just a question of, you know, if some of the newer coaches, they actually might, they don't understand the program and none of us have played with it in years. It's actually pretty straightforward maybe even easier than all this points business we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Um, It's actually a cool program. As I recall, it'll actually players will reject offers. There'll be natural holdouts. And if a player rejects an offer, he actually asks for more the second time around. Um, It's a, as I recall, it was a pretty cool program. Um, So I think teams, I think coaches would like it, but, change is a big deal right people are you know they some of these guys have just learned the points and now that would be disappearing they may not want to go down this road and i try i told you i was going to try to see if i had access to that um over the weekend the ritz to see if i could get it to work but apparently i don't have that i think i do i think i have it i think i have the program i don't know I'm not sure if there's a is a commissioner version of this program. I really am not sure, but I know I have I have at least the user version. You know, for the coach, um, I'd have to look and see. I, I don't know who who created it, if it's gettable again or buyable again. I'm not. You know, I have no idea. But it was a very cool program back in the day. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
and it's more realistic for sure. I mean, because that was, I, as I recall, I think we every every team had like twenty five million in bonus money, and then we had a salary cap, I guess, and you had to sign your players and you know and use your bonus. You had to watch your bonus money. But then, of course, the next step will be: well, would we allow trading of money? That would definitely come. You know, teams are going to want to do that also, where you make a trade and you send a million dollars to a coach. Mm-hmm. So. It would, be a, it would be a learning curve for sure, and we'd have to, you know, figure it all out again. All right. All right, guys. Probably something we'd have to play and test with during during the off season to help everyone get a feel of how the things work, even if we had to you know, use, you know, the mock, I don't know, a different league file just to. Or do a soft launch play. on it. Do a soft launch yeah, on it. Yeah, kind of play with. I don't know. But well, all it was was a file. It was just one, like one file, added into the league files that I send out. It's just one little file added in there, and then you open up. The, it was what was called the con manager on your desktop, and then you load in the league, and it would load in that one file, and then boom, your team and all the other teams, all their salary information was in it what year their contract expired, how much they're paying, what's your cap, how much space do you have, all that, you know, the bonus money, how much you have left. And it was pretty, pretty simple, actually. It really was not that difficult to do. And when you had players that needed restructuring, you could do it any time like we do now. And you would just send me that. You would do the restructures on your end. You'd plug them in. You'd create a file. You'd send it back to the commissioner. And then he would run it whenever. And then you'd get the results, whether the players accepted. And by the way, it would give you a, an acceptance percentage. So there was a way to give your player 100% acceptance, but you'd have to pay more money for that. So you could also send in, I think the low is 60%. You could send in a, an offer for a player at 60% that he would accept it. And if he rejects it, he'll ask for more money the next time. Hmm. So it was yeah, it, that it, right it was there actually sounds- a lot of fun. I say that right there sounds like a whole lot of fun to me. <laughs> it, you know what? If, as far as the signing, the GM aspect of signing players and, and, you know, all that, it was a lot more fun than these points. These, these points are not fun. This is, there's nothing exciting about what we're doing. This would add a much cooler dimension to the GM role. And I don't really think it's that much more difficult than the points and all that stuff. Um, it's just different. But yeah. it is more realistic. And it would, of course, go better with a salary cap. You know, the league would have to adopt the salary cap again. You don't have to, but it would be more fun to do that. Otherwise, you'd just be offering every player 100% acceptance, right? There would be no challenge to this thing. I'd say let's look into that during the offseason and maybe do a soft launch, you know, if all the coaches are involved in it and just so it wouldn't affect the the season going forward, just a soft launch to see how everyone likes it and – and then assess it, and at the end of the season, and see where where you can go. You want to go with it or not? Something to think about. Well, the, the key thing is we got to make sure we have the program. That, yeah, you know, like of I course, have to talk yes. to Charlie and see if he has it. Um, I wish the original commissioner, who is still out there in somewhere in you know internet land, um, he's still alive and out there. I mean, this guy had the program for sure, but whether he kept all that, all those things. I have no idea. I mean, I haven't talked to that guy in years, um, but it's worth at least, an, you know, worth examining because it would be a lot more fun for the GMs. And by the way, it would also create a situation where teams like, you know, Justin or Thomas or the better teams, let's say, they would have to, you know, listen, they're going to lose, you're going to lose players this way because you can't sign, Justin can't sign, you know, all, all 12 of his wide receivers and cornerbacks top dollar and expect to stay under the salary cap. These players, some of these players are going to reject offers. And once they reject, you can, I think he had three times to get a rejected offer and then he was gone. Then he would hold out. Mm-hmm. He was finished. He, he wouldn't sign with you after that. I, I'm pretty sure that was, I think that was one of the settings. You got three shots at the player after that. He's not going to sign with you. What he's does he do? Become a free agent? He becomes next year. He becomes a free agent. Yeah, he basically w- refuses to sign with your team. Oh, who created this program anyway? Do you know? I, I, offhand, no, I don't know. I'd have to go I, again. I have to find it myself. And and there's yeah, there's there's probably a name. I can't think of the guy's name, but but yes, if it, if it's out there, it's definitely worth exploring. And at least, like you say, maybe 
next season I could set it up and throw it into the files and maybe, you know, you guys all have the pro and at least look at it. And, right. you know, before we did something like that in a following season, okay. we'll have to say, let's right. find it first. All yeah. Right. Yeah. No, nah, that would be cool. Yeah. I'm trying, I'm actually doing a Google search now to see if I can find the thing. I, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we, we're running a little bit long, so we're going to put a pin in that one and have Mitch do his investigation and, Rich do his investigating as well, since we are running a bit long here. We're going to go ahead and jump into our week 14 games. Uh, we got the sport, we got the bookie over here with us as well. So we're going to try and run through these games uh, quickly and wrap this up so we don't go over too long with you guys. So uh, with that being said, uh, first game on week 14, we have New England hosting the Jets. Uh, Rich is giving them 14 and a half to the Jets. We're going to start with Dean. Oh, wait a minute. Before I even get into that, sorry. Uh, let me rewind this. Uh, for the season, uh, our predictions, leading off with our predictions, Mitch is sitting there at 79 and 38. Uh, I'm wow. in second at 66 and 51 for the season. And Dean is at 56 and 61 for the season. Uh, for lead pipe locks, I'm holding strong at nine and four. Uh, Mitch is holding at seven and six. And Dean is at six and seven. So um, turning the channel back now, going into week 14, we have New England hosting the Jets. And Rich is giving the uh, Jets 14 and a half. Dean. Yeah, this one's easy to pick. G-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. They will win and cover the spread. Okay. <laughs> Mitch. Not so fat. No, I'm kidding. No, Jets big. Okay. <laughs> well, we already got it, so we'll hear him officially. Rich, who you got this week? I'm taking the uh, P-A-T-S, Pats, Pats, Pats. Uh, I'm taking the cover. All right. I'm 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 taking the Jets on this one as well, so we're going across the board. Uh, next game we have, this is our no, first. Uh, no, you, you, didn't, you didn't pay attention. He, he's taking the Pats. <laughs> you didn't hear him. Yeah, I, I, heard him. I heard him. I heard him. Okay. I heard him. But I'm not in the official standing, so I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Exactly. Okay, that's, that's right. Okay, okay. So next game we have is our uh, first of two pickums this week. This is Pittsburgh hosting L.A. Mitch. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I think as I said earlier, you know, I think we take Steve for his word. He's throwing it in, and so uh, I'm going to take Pittsburgh. All right, Dean. Yeah, this is a pick. I'm picking the home team, Pittsburgh, and I, th I think it could be close, but I, I think the Steelers will, uh, will get a win this week. Rich. I am taking the Chargers, and Steve is going to show some pride here, and he's going to win. Okay. I am going to take Pitt on this one. Uh, I'm trying to keep everything going here. Oh, and don't forget, guys, we still got our locks. So next game we have Las Vegas hosting Mitch's cheerleading, his uh, his team he cheers for. Uh, I mean, uh, Minnesota. <laughs> They are giving Minnesota eight and a half, starting with Dean. Yeah, I think the Raiders have been playing better and, and will make a tough game of this, but Minnesota's looked very good the last couple of weeks, so I am going to uh, say that the Vikings win cover in this, on this one. Mitch. Yeah, the Vikings will win this game and uh, keep the heat on me in the West. All right. Rich. What's the spread on this game again? Eight and a half. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking I'm taking the uh, Raiders and the points. Okay. Now, uh, for myself, um, I'm going to take Minnesota this week, and I'm going to put my lock on this one. Um, you know, 
This is Mitch. You three are in lockstep in every game. Yeah, well, you know, this is Mitch's team, so I'm going to have to, again, like I did last time, I'm going to have to borrow one of his pom-poms this week. So This is where Barney lays the egg. Right? Yeah, no, you better not, Barney. Mitch will be very <laughs> upset with you. <laughs> he won't wear it's that. It's a mixed bag. It's he a, won't wear it's that. a mixed bag. He won't wear that Vikings. Win, but also, yeah. Mitch Go won't ahead. wear that. He, he will not wear that Vikings cheerleading outfit for you. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. I say it's a mixed bag because you know I you know I, I think the Vikings will win, but I had I want them to lose because they are second place. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> Next game, no we... late season chokes this year, right? Yeah. Right, uh, Mitch? <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Next game, we have Atlanta hosting Washington. Uh, Rich is giving Washington ten and a half. Mitch, hey, um, Washington has not been playing that well uh, here recently. Uh, Atlanta, even though they are, their record hasn't shown it, has played a little bit. Uh, better. Um, uh, you know what, though? I need Atlanta to lose so I can get a higher draft <laughs> pick. So I'm going to take Washington. Let's go, Washington. Okay. Dean. Yeah, and for the record, I'll say that I'll neither confirm nor deny that James is working with Connor Salius to steal signals from Washington Redskins games. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably right. But you don't know, you know that uh, James is the biggest Falcons fan this week. Mm. And uh, it's it's a home game. I think we're going to play tough and manage to find some defensive stops. And uh, Hendon Hooker starts his second game, and he's going to be doing some good passing. So I'm predicting the upset. All right. Rich. I'm going to take Washington because Jerry has to stop the bleeding right here. All right. Um, this is a tough one. Like Mitch said, they haven't been playing that well. Uh, I'm calling for Atlanta in the upset. Calling for the upset this week. Uh, next game is our second pick em of the week. We have Jacksonville hosting the New York Giants. Dean. Well, you know, this is the game we discussed that could very well actually be the Sacco Bowl. I think this is going to be a really close game. It is a pick em. And I'm going to go ahead and say that, you know, you should all take out your second mortgage and your third mortgage and and uh, max out your credit cards on this and put the bet on this. And, and who am I saying you're putting your betting on? Well, I'm putting the lead pipe lock on Jacksonville to win this game at home, even though it may be close. Jacksonville is going to win. Okay. Mitch. Yeah, I think the only team that benefits in this game uh, is the Giants, and that's if they lose. So I'm going to take Jacksonville. Okay. Rich. I have no way. I'm predicting a tie in a pick <laughs> game where nobody wins. <laughs> You're predicting a tie, huh? It'll probably be 0-0. Zero, zero. There you go. Well, so I was thinking six, six, nine, nine, something like that. Oh, come on! You got to pick somebody. Come on now. Uh, I'll take Jacksonville. I'll say if I had to pick, I would, I would take Jacksonville. Okay. Then uh, that tie would be goals, right? And then no one scores on overtime. Yep. Okay. Well, um, that could be the ultimate soccer ball. No uh, one wins. That's, that's an honor so bad that no one wants to win it. Oh, this is a tough one. Um, I'm going to take Jacksonville on this one. So I'm going to go with Jacksonville this week. Next game, we have Indianapolis hosting Detroit. And they are giving Detroit six and a half. Mitch. Well, Detroit is uh, definitely trying to gear up for the playoffs. I think that. Uh, our, our guy JB is is putting some putting a little extra time in this week, so I'm gonna take Detroit. Dean. Yeah, I think James is listening to the show and and and, and just breathe a sigh of relief that I didn't put a lead pipe lock in this game. <laughs> but I think the Lions will 
will uh, rebound from that tough loss last week against Kansas City. And uh, even though it's on the road, playing an inconsistent Colts team, I think uh, the Lions will put it together and win this game. And cover the spread. Rich. I think James, because he's a, such a great coach and a good guy, he wants to make the NFC as interesting as possible. He's going to lose this week in Indianapolis to create a three-way tie with San Francisco and New Orleans. Wow. James is James is that kind of guy. He 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 loves his fellow coach and he's going to sack. He's going to he's tanking this week. Okay. Um I got to ride I got to ride with my I got to ride with the Lions again. I I did it once already. I got to do it again. Sorry. I'm going with Detroit this week. Go Lions. <laughs> Coming down to our final three games of week 14. Next one up, we have Seattle hosting uh, Chicago, and they are giving Chicago 13 and a half. Dean. Yeah, this is going to look a lot like my game last week, and, uh, you know, Zach Wilson can very much do what Hen and Hooker did. But you know the difference is? The Seahawks defense isn't going to just totally collapse in the fourth quarter. But, you know, this is the Cardinals. And uh, I think Chicago will still win this game, but they will not cover that spread. Okay. Mitch. Ooh, man, I tell you what. Um, the hottest team in the league hosting the Cardinals. Oh man! Uh, who, I by the, the way, Cardinals have won nine. In I was gonna say they. I was say the Cardinals have won nine in a row. So uh, actually, let me switch that. The hottest team in the league going in to play uh, Seattle with a three-game win streak. Um, man, we need Seattle to win to create even more chaos uh, in uh, in the uh, in the NFC. But I gotta go with Chicago. I think Chicago will win this game. All right. But closer than the experts think. Closer than the experts think. Rich. Yeah, I think I'm taking Seattle in the points on this game. I don't I don't think Justin's got any motivation to really win this. I mean, he wants to win. He always tries. But I think he's already got the one seed locked up. He's got a two-game lead over Jerry, really, because he beat him head-to-head. So I, I don't think Justin's going to spend too much time on this game. All right. Well... I'm going to take it. I'll run with it. Obviously, you know who I'm going for. Go Hawks. Uh, final two games, we have Anaheim hosting San Francisco. They're giving San Francisco eight and a half. Mitch. All right. You can write it down. You can pay off all the debt from all those Christmas presents you've bought. Take Anaheim in this game. They're going to pull off the upset against Ooh. San Francisco. Wow. Dean. Wow, I'm shocked. You know, I had already sent my picks, and you know who I picked, Mark. I'm shocked it. Mm-hmm. Mission I actually grew in this. Um, yeah, the Rams are going to pull off the upset at home. I mean, I keep saying, don't underestimate Shaggy. Rams win at home. Upset win. In fact, I'm going to put even more on this. They're going to win this game, and they'll actually get 100 yards passing. Okay. <laughs> and 10 completions. Yeah, and double-digit completions. <laughs> Rich, what do you got? <laughs> 49ers, lock of the week. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go for the upset. Um I need I need Anaheim to do something. Like I said, misery loves company, and I love the I love the misery, and I love the chaos. I, that would definitely upset everything out in the West. So I'm going for Anaheim for the upset. Last game that we have for Week 14: Kansas City hosting New Orleans. They are giving Kansas City seven and a half. Dean. I'm I'm wondering if this is a game where Mitch is going to pull out his Lou Holtz act. Um, I'm going completely completely for the home team here. I know the Saints have been strong some weeks, have been inconsistent, and uh, 
they're not they're not going to Kansas City with their A game this week. Kansas City Chiefs are going to win this game and absolutely definitely cover the spread. Rich, I don't know, uh, Mitch. If you win this game, do you clinch the division? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it would be pretty pretty close. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah. I know I'm, I'm taking I'm Minnesota, taking Minnesota, so you know. Right, I'm taking the Chiefs in this game because uh, New Orleans, listen, I, I like Frederick as a coach, but, man, is he is up and down. I mean, if you look at his career record, he has been within one or two games of 500 his entire time. He wins a couple, loses a couple, wins one, loses two, wins two. He, he just cannot seem to, you know, get a streak going. So this is going to be his down week. I'm taking the Chiefs. Okay. Mitch. I mean, have you all not looked at the numbers? I mean, come on, guys. I mean, New Orleans is third in the league in <laughs> passing offense. My team, I mean, I'm like 12th uh, in, 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 in pass, getting QBR rating against me. And so, I mean, Thor, I mean, he made uh, whoever they played this past week look like uh, amateur hour uh, throwing the ball over the field. Um, you know, I... You know, and you can't rich, run the ball either. I know, I know. As Rich said, I mean, I only played one quarter. I only played one quarter this past week against Detroit, and uh, yeah, I'm taking the Saints. I changed my mind. Yeah, I, I mean, geez. Uh, so I don't know, guys, but I mean, I can't bet against myself. But uh, you know, I, whew, I don't know, guys. This is gonna be tough. Are you paying royalties on Lou Holtz for this act? <laughs> I, 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 I don't. You're talking about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I'm just honored to take the field with these guys. Yeah, because we all know that, we all know that the Saints, you know, beat the team that beat that team that beat the team that went to the Super Bowl. So the Saints are, by that logic, the number one team in in the league. Well, I mean, look. if you look, I mean, the Saints are they are sixth in the power rankings. I mean. They're only a couple of points behind me, and, and they're tied with Minnesota. They're ahead of Detroit in the power rankings, and as Rich said, I mean, I barely beat Detroit. So, Well, you I, lost to Detroit except for the second quarter. Well, that's right, Detroit. yeah. I mean, I lost 17-7 <laughs> to seven to Detroit, you know, in the second quarter. So, Well, I remember that years ago when Lou Holtz was at Notre Dame and they had lost to Boston College, and he said, well, you look at who Boston College beat. They beat this and beat that team, who beat these teams and beat them. He made this convoluted argument of how Boston College was the best team in the country, and and you know, that's why his team lost to them. Yeah, well, you know. it's just we, we should be concerned with the Kansas City choke at the end of these seasons. Uh, yeah, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. <laughs> All right, guys. We've been on here for well over an hour, so we're gonna wrap this thing up. They're gonna be Mark, like, "Did you pick the game?" Oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't heard your pick, Mark. Because you guys been talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with Kansas City on this one. I need, I need New Orleans to lose. Like I said, misery loves company, and I want to see chaos in the a in the NFC West. So I'm going against all those teams uh, to lose. I want to see chaos in our division. So. As we are coming up to wrap this week's get, uh, week's show up, we got some good games coming up this week. Um, definitely want to thank Rich for coming on to uh, add some uh, entertainment and some excitement to the show this week. And also discussing um, his, um, uh, his topic regarding the trades a little bit more in depth and the possibility of a potential new salary cap system. So... Um, Thank you very much for coming on the show this week, sir. Uh, I think I think here's an, ex- an official exploratory committee for the uh, yes. salary cap uh, program. Yep. Yes. Thanks for having me, Mark. Commissioner Rogers demanded I show up and defend the league, so I've done that. There you go. All right, we're going to go around the table. Uh, Dean, what do you have? Um, other than just the usual, good luck to everyone in their games this weekend. All right, Mitch, what you got before you take us home? Uh, I'm just contemplating whether demons show up for this game this week, but uh, I guess I will. <laughs> so I guess the only thing left to do now is let's get it. 